Hello once again and today on extractions and ire we are going to be recrystallizing some paracetamol also known here in Australia as Panadol well the tablets of Panadol I guess once they're in the pure form you can refer to them as paracetamol also referred to as acetamophen I've never actually heard it referred to that it's always paracetamol here in Australia anyway um, but yes why are we doing this well you may have already guessed uh, I am going to attempt the synthesis of PDDNP, uh, which is para DDNP, um, which is uh, an explosive um, that the Science Matters forums have been uh, pretty interested in over the last sort of a year. Um, they've, you know, these two people, it's always Roscoe Bodine, he does some great work. Um, they've put together this sort of document which is their sort of idea on um, how to make it, what's the best way of doing it. And I haven't done it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow this pretty much exactly. Um, which you may think is cheating, but I'm sure I can find a way to stuff this up if I really wanted to, and I probably will. Um, but yeah, um, I'll also be attempting, oh well, actually I've already attempted an ortho DDNP um, from aspirin um, but I hopefully we'll be doing a series on that as well um, university starts for me on the 29th of February it is today I think it's the 4th of February so hopefully by the start of university I'll have both DDNPs as well as tetrazoles and hopefully azides which is setting myself quite a high standard for the next few weeks and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to complete them Oh, but uh, that's the that's the aim. Um, so today we're just going to be getting some of the uh, paracetamol from the tablets. Now, all right, what to buy? Um, these were both seventy cents, and I thought I'd make a balanced program here and buy buy from Woolworths and from Coles. Um, you won't understand if you're overseas, but um, yeah, that's what I thought. But this green packet, you know, the label new formula also contains. Um, where's ingredients? Focus. No, yeah. Also contains hydroxy hydroxobenzoate, which a doesn't sound very healthy. Also sounds to me like impurity. So fuck them. Um, we're just going to be doing this, which you know may also contain the impurities, but according to the ingredients, each tablet contains paracetamol 500 milligrams. Probably contains preservatives. Preservatives are probably a standard thing, but we're going to be doing that. So I have three of these packets. Two of them are already in there. Um, there's 20 packets, they're 500 milligram tablets, so we've got 30 grams all up, 70 cents a packet. It's not too bad. Well, I mean, it's still $70 a kilo, but still, that's not too bad in terms of medicine. Good old home brand. Um, you know, you can buy the normal Panadol um, brand. Panadol is just paracetamol, but um, they obviously contain the preservative as well, I guess. Well, they are, on the packet it's written also contains hydroxybenzoate, so... I'm going to try and avoid them. So first I'm just going to chuck that in there and crush them up and then I'm going to be recrystallizing it from ethanol. I believe 95% ethanol, which is that thing there. Um, also, while that's while the ethanol is heating up, um, I guess I'll do a run around the lab and show you what's new and what's old and yeah. Nothing makes me feel more like a drug lord than popping pill packets into a beaker. Um, yeah. So if you're watching this, this is not pseudoephedrine. Please don't sue me. Ah, oh, motherfucker. You know, if you ate this much paracetamol, you'd die. Just a fun fact for you. Okay, I've transferred the powder to this uh, flat bottom round. What's the name of the flask? Yeah, yeah, whatever flask, and we're going to add uh, 140 mils of um, ethanol, 95%. Um, we're following this. I've already fucked up following it. So it wants you to have a combined weight of 25 grams of pure acetaminophen. I hate that word. 25 grams of pure paracetamol. Um, and I've used 30, so I'm just going to use slightly more solvent. Um, yeah. Oh, well, that's not an issue, it's just, you know, look how bad I am at following instructions. Um, yeah. 
Alright, we're going to heat that up to near boiling. Um, so that'll take a few minutes. So hopefully we'll try not to blow up the place with ethanol fumes. And while that's doing it, I guess we'll take a look around and see what else is happening in the lab at the moment. This uh, was meant to be the video that was up a few days ago, but I've had some serious issues with this making perchloric acid. Um, namely, shattered glassware <laughs> um, actually broke my last flask in attempting it. Um, and it's still not done. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to put up a video on that or how I'm going to deal with the footage because I've got about 40 minutes of footage there and it's still not finished. A lot of it's just me swearing at it and giving it the finger um, and being really disappointed. The iron oxide I've been running every so often when I, re when I remember and I'm not using power in the lab because it runs off um, before the double adapter. Um, or the four adapter, whatever they're called, power board, that's the word. Um, yeah, and I've got a reasonable amount there, so I guess at some point I will be filtering that off and um, running that, um, you know, cleaning it up and converting it all to red iron oxide. Obviously with no urgency anymore, uh, seeing as I did the thermites and they worked reasonably well, and there'll be a video up, I don't know, eventually. This is some uh, gallium chloride. I had some gallium oxide left over from, I don't know, something. So, um, I don't know what to do with that. I guess we'll just crystallize it out and store it forever. Uh, unless you guys can suggest something I can do with gallium salts or something. But most excitingly of all, um, I smashed this flask, but I knew it was my last flask because I'd smashed the other ones. I ordered some glassware the other day and it is turned up today. So that's super exciting. Um, I will get to unboxing this right now. Um, they go, the thanks to China, they go pretty ham on the um, old sticky tape, so it, it's going to take me a while, but it's good, it means hopefully it all comes completely uncracked, which would be nice. Also got some chemicals on the top, I'll open that as well. These chemicals are potassium permanganate, 100 grams, just because I ran out. Um, I'm attempting to make ammonium permanganate, but my motivation for that is low because uh, this, is, this isn't working and the reward, I don't know, I think it'll be that exciting, but whatever. Also some sodium benzoic powder. Um, this is to make some benzoic acid esters with the girlfriend. Also, uh, I want to try out the um, molten whistle mix that my good friend uh, Dorana made. I don't know, Dorana 355A? I hope it's not 335. Dude, the amount of times I've been on that channel, I can't remember the numbers. Um, yeah, he, he made popular the, the molten whistle mix, sort of, um, which exploded very well. So hopefully I can try that. Also make some benzene if I ever need it. So that's useful. And these obviously came because they put their logo on the front from Chemicals. Um, they, they were great, free shipping. They didn't even sponsor me for this. And look, I'm giving them advertisement, you know. Look, you know, explosion of fire, not selling out. Okay, everything's basically dissolved. Well, no, not everything's basically dissolved, but the vast majority of the powder has dissolved. Um, of course, all the insoluble binders are left behind here. That's why it's looking milky. So I'm just going to crank the heat down on this and let it cool down to room temperature. No, oh, look, I snap a lid. Oh, well. That's good. I like keeping these foam containers. Obviously, there's one there. Now another one is oh, it's closed. Whatever. Yeah, there's another one. Hot glassware in, in the cupboard. Um, Look, the C tape continues in here. Oh, this is a mess. <laughs> All right, so what do we got? We have two round bottom 500 ml flasks, so I can start making my nitric acid again. Uh, we have a 250 ml. Oh, second thought, putting this back in the box with the stick tape. It's a terrible idea. Um, we have a 250ml um, round bottom, we have a 250ml um, round uh, flask with a flat bottom, we have a 500ml 3 neck flask, and we have a 150ml 1 neck flask. Because sometimes, sometimes I do a little bit smaller scale chemistry. Um, yeah. That's great. Does it really look like ninety dollars worth of stuff? I guess so. Yeah, that was about ninety-five Australian, uh, including shipping. So that's not too bad, really. I also got some 
cat clips. Um, because I, I don't know where they go, I just lose them. And um, I was going to get my friend to, he has a 3D printer, and I was going to get him to print me some. But, um, well actually he hasn't finished building a 3D printer. He is too busy chasing women to build a 3D printer for me. But that is understandable. So I just bought some for about $2. <laughs> All right, strangely, we've taken on a bit of a pink color. Yeah, it took, um, all right, this took so long to filter. I uh, obviously used a vacuum. I was a bit worried it was gonna explode because of the uh, ethanol fumes just being pumped through it. For about an hour it actually took. Um, I guess just because the binders are just so fine um, and they're just the right size to clog up my center. Um, but yeah. Um, now we're boiling off the ethanol. Strangely, we, we seem to be taking on a bit of a pink colour. Very light pink. A bit hard to see on camera, it's easier to see in real life. Um, yeah, so we're going to boil off probably half the ethanol. I've been boiling it for a little bit now. I'll chuck the fan on to make sure the fumes don't build up in here and I don't get hammered. Also, the place doesn't explode. Um, and then we're going to add some water in there and start crashing out the um, paracetamol. Which is great, and we got no binders in there, so all, you know all the crap was filtered out. I feel like we lost some product because it took so long to filter through that some of the ethanol evaporated and um, some of the um, paracetamol crystallized out while it was filtering, which made the filtering even slower. But so um, we did lose some, but uh, that's okay. Um, you know, it's seventy cents uh, for ten grams. I can afford to lose a few. It's not too bad. All right, seems like the pink color's gone away, so maybe I've seen things, maybe, you know, it didn't happen. Um, maybe, yeah, it's just gone away. Whatever, all right, we're gonna add uh, 50 mils of water now to this boiling solution as per the instructions. All right, it's coming out now. Oh yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, oh yeah, yeah. Wow, that's great. That's uh, yeah. It's just been doing nothing for a couple of minutes, and uh, for probably ten minutes, and then all of a sudden, it just came back out. That's great. And so I'm going to add another fifty mils of water uh, in about thirty seconds. Add it slowly, so I shatter the beaker. All right, and it's come back out. You can see it. It is a coarse sort of sand-like precipitate in here. That's excellent. Um, now, obviously, the next step is just to filter and dry this. Um, but I have places to be tonight, um, and I thought I'd put up this video tonight. Um, I thought I'd be finished, but of course, the filtration took you know 59 minutes longer than I thought it would. Um, but yeah, you get the general gist of, you know, I'll, you know, discuss yield and stuff in uh, the next relevant video. Um, this has been recrystallization of um, paracetamol from paracetamol tablets. Um, that's great. So we got some binder-free pure paracetamol in there, which of course we'll just, we'll just wash um, and rinse with some water and stuff and yeah. Alright. I'm done. Thanks for watching.